Well, welcome to the uh, McHenry High School Cognitive Lesson Series on Exercise Dynamics and Heart Rate. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about just the basics of uh, a, an effective exercise session and how monitoring your heart rate can be an effective tool to, to uh, measure your progress. One of the important things to do when working out is to remember the importance of warming up. Uh, warm up prepares your body for the workout and it, and it gets your body temperature up, it, uh, the heart rate increases it and, and it actually makes increase, increases flexibility. Um, you always want to start with similar activities that you'll be performing but at a slower pace, therefore easing into it. Uh, the more muscles, the more, the more muscles can be flexible and pliable, the less risk for injury. So that's why your, your teachers, your PE leaders, your coaches uh, usually will always encourage you to do some type of warm up to just get the heart rate up and be ready for the exercise session. If you're going on a run, start with a, a walk, then move into a light jog, then into a run. Uh, just so you modify the activity and you ease into it. A workout we compose and use an acronym known as FIT, F-I-T-T. -T. The FIT principle is basically nothing more than an acronym that helps you to think through um, what you need to do when you're setting your goals in a workout. F stands for the frequency. How often are you working out? Some people are training five days a week, six days a week, others three days a week. That's all part of what you need to think through. Intensity would be how difficult the workout is. Maybe there's one day a week where at the beginning of the week it's a really intense workout, the next day it may be a little bit lighter. So you need to think through those. And, and for athletes, you think through how it works in your season. Um, beginning of the season, the training might be a lot more difficult. You know, I'm thinking of basketball, for example. The conditioning aspect would be very high at the beginning of the year. At the end of the season, when uh, we're trying to prevent injuries and those kind of things, the intensity level may have changed. The time and duration all ha always has to have be part of our thought process. How long am I spending on this workout? If I'm training for an aerobic exercise, uh, let's say I'm doing distance training, uh, cross country, whatever, I might want to do longer bits of exercise so I'm building up my capacity to handle longer workloads versus short, quick bursts of energy. And then the type, you know, always thinking through, well, what is the best type? You know, CrossFit training or cross training for a certain type of training. Um, another another type of exercise, um, depending on what the goals is, if it's toning or sculpting versus um, weight loss. The basic difference is you're gonna always look at whether this is aerobic or anaerobic. If it's aerobic, I'm continuously using oxygen the whole time. So riding a bike, running, swimming, uh, and, and the whole time I'm moving, okay? Anaerobic would be more of the exercises where my body cannot keep up my, my capacity to get oxygen to the cells cannot keep up with the demand that's needed because of the high intensity. So these are more explosive activities, Olympic lifting, plyometrics, those kind of things where you're not, you can't do them for 20, 30 minutes at a high level because your body just can't get that oxygen to those cells as quickly. Both types of training are important. So it's important that you, uh, you factor that in. You have some aerobic or cardio portion of your workout mixed with the anaerobic to, to build strength. Um, the FIT principle, if you look, here's a sample workout, um, you know, frequency, we're talking three days a week. The intensity, as many as possible, that's how hard. Time, uh, what's the length of the rounds or what's the length of the workout? And then the type. Um, looking at some of the fitness principles, we'll always take a look at some of the terms and what they have to do with how we're changing our body. Overload is this process of working harder than your body normally works. So you stress the muscles. Okay, and the whole point of that is when they're stressed, they build back stronger. As we gradually increase the overload that's uh, necessary to achieve our higher fitness levels, that progression. So if I say we're making progress, we're progressing forward, that's what that's about. Specificity, that's particular exercises or activities that are related to what your health goals are. So that goes back to that idea of uh, the type, F-I-T-T. Um, what are you doing to achieve your, your fitness goals? Uh, and then at the end of a workout, we always want to cool down. And that transitions our heart rate back to a normal level. Uh, that's, a, that's good for us because it gets us back to our resting heart rate. You don't ever want to stop quickly because uh, you can become faint. Uh, it, it, um, you know, it, the blood stays in the muscles, the lactic acid buildup and all that. So um, it, it limits the flow of in, in the heart and brain uh, of that blood flow. So we need to... We need to just kind of cool down and ease back into it 
and it should be about the same amount of time as the warm-up. So many times athletes will skip the cool down. They get down the workout and they just immediately stop and we want to try to bring us back. Stretching. Uh, stretching is an important part of what an athlete does. It loosens the muscles before the workout. You can prevent a muscle and joint soreness or injury um, by just doing a little bit of stretching. And we're not talking about bouncing um, and uh, doing them quickly. That can actually tear muscle fibers. So you should feel tension, but you shouldn't feel pain. Um, dynamic stretching is when we're stretching in motion. You can see the person there. Um, you know, stretching as they're moving, whether it be the lunges or, or the 10-man uh, walks or the, or the skipping, those kind of motions, if you're stretching, can actually help kind of stretch, elongate the muscle without doing it and doing it in a way that gets you ready for the workout. Static stretching has been around for years, and that's where you hold it for at least 15 seconds. Uh, gymnasts do this for a long period of time. Um, it, it's better for a cool down in, in static stretching, but any type of stretching is going to benefit you. As we transition into heart rate, I want to talk a little bit about why this is important and why we really believe that it's important for you to know why heart rate is an important factor in your fitness. Your heart rate is essentially your resting heart rate, okay? When you start off, the whole thing is based on what is it doing when I'm at rest. So uh, when you're not exercising, that's your RHR. And your resting heart rate should be about 72 to 84 beats per minute if you're a healthy average person. If it's more than that, it means your heart's working too hard when you're at rest. Obviously, the lower the resting heart rate, the more in shape you're at, you are. How do we figure your resting heart rate? Well, there's a basic simple formula. First of all, you just take your pulse for 60 seconds. Now, some people don't want to sit and do that and hold and count for 60 seconds, so you can obviously take it for 10 seconds times six. You can take it for 15 seconds times four. You can take it for 20 seconds times three. So all those will work, okay? But that you're establishing what is my resting amount. There's two basic places that you find it on your on your uh, on your body. You, an easy way is up around the carotid artery and near the neck. So just taking the the two fingers, the thumb has a little bit of a pulse in it, and finding up around the throat next to the carotid artery. And by feeling that, you should feel the pulse there. Uh, or some people have some success with their fingers on their wrist. And so once you find the pulse, you basically take it for one minute, okay? Or 15 seconds times four, whatever you choose to do. So we're gonna take some time here uh, as a class to, um, to do this. And I will um, you know, stop the video whenever you need to and uh, do your 15 second pulse check. Now that you've found your, your resting heart rate, what does it tell you? Well, if you're 50, uh, if your resting heart rate is 50 or under, that's top athletes. Your heart's in good resting uh, health. 70, 51 to 71, that's a good athlete. That's a, that's a nice range. And I would assume that many of you uh, athletes in high school would be in that zone. 72 to 84 is, is what I said was the average resting heart rate. But anything above 85, if you really are at rest and not stressed and it's above 85, we may need to start working out. Some of the other things about heart rate that we need to factor in is our max heart rate. And that would be the, um, the, the amount that we don't want to get too far above, our, our upper limit, so to speak. The way we figure that, a basic formula is 220, the number 220, and you subtract your age. So if you're a 20-year-old person, easy math, 220 minus uh, 20 is 200. Um, target, the easy formula, and what I want you to use for your uh, worksheet today, is to just take 220 and uh, you minus your age and then you take it times 0.6 or 0.7 and then the upper limit of 0.85 and we'll do an example of that in a minute. And then we already talked about rest. Uh, I'm gonna show you a, uh, a another example of heart rate that is uh, a little bit more complicated, um, but it's, it's better because what it does is it factors in your resting heart rate. Uh, as a 15 year old, your max heart rate is gonna be 220 minus 15, which is uh, 205. So my, my upper limit of my heart rate is 205. Then what I wanna do is I wanna subtract what my resting heart rate is. So um, if I'm a good athlete and it's at 66, that's gonna make my, rest, my, uh, my, up, my number at 139, okay? So then I wanna figure out what is 60%? What's my lower limit of that, um, of that 139 and so that would be 83 
okay? Because I'm taking uh, 139 times 6 is 83. And then I'm going to figure out what's 85% of that. So 139 times 0 0.85 is 118, okay? So both those limits tell me kind of where I'm at. Now, we, if, you, if you're kind of looking there, you're thinking, well, I need to add that resting heart rate back. And you're right. I put it back, add the 66 to both, and now that tells me... Um, my, my actual target zone is 149 to 184, and that, is, uh, that would be my target heart rate. Because if, um, if I'm working out and I notice I slip below 149, I know I need to work harder. If I'm above 184, I know that I may be really stretching my upper limit, and it's okay to ease back so I can work out longer. So 149 to 184 is this person's target heart rate if they're a 15-year-old in good athletic condition. The easier way to figure this is to just take 220 minus your age, take that amount times 0.6 or 0.7 and times 0.85 and not factoring in the resting heart rate. But we recommend that you do that because just because you're 15 doesn't mean you have the same resting amount. You know, feel free to, to go back and, and rewind this, do this again later because this is, a, this is an important principle. Thankfully though, a lot of technology is doing this stuff for us. Um, if you look at some of the target zones, we're looking at, uh, you know, a target based on a resting heart rate of 75, which is a normal person. And look here at the different ages. Remember, we're looking again at a 15-year-old. Uh, a target of 60 to 85 percent would be 154 to 185, and um, we're looking at our max of 205. Uh, an 18-year-old, it's down just a little bit. Uh, because as age increases, our, our targets slide down a little bit. But you can see for the most part, anybody in a high school age is anywhere between about 150 to, to 185 or so if they're working hard. Some different zones, though. There's different zones that we factor in in terms of what our goals are. If we're doing a low-intensity workout, we're about 60 to 63%. If we're trying to do some recovery, um, that's about 63 to 70%. Fat burning, um, we know that working out in the fat burning zone for long periods of time will actually increase the amount of uh, lipid burning in, in the system. And then aerobic zone would be where I'm really stretching my ability to use oxygen and strengthening uh, the heart and the cardiovascular system to supply the cells with what they need. Anaerobic, uh, that's, a, that's where the person is having a hard time speaking as they're working out because they're, they're breathing so quickly. And then our max VO2, um, that's our very top threshold where um, we're really seeing, you know, what is the most I can get out of a, a workout where I'm, I'm uh, this is my very upper limit about the amount of oxygen I can get in. So here's some more uh, kind of visual examples of what we're talking about here. Um, our max performance, notice I'm in the top end of the zone. Um, you know, it's like a sprint race. And those of you that have ever done a sprint, you know how you, you know, you know how it's feeling as you're breathing, uh, very exhausted breathing and, and muscles. Um, then we've got uh, a hard workout, uh, muscular fatigue, heavy breathing. You're only doing that for a couple minutes, two to about 10 minutes. That's 80, 90%. So those would be on the top end. If I want to just improve fitness, I'm looking for about 10 to 40 minutes here. That's most of the stuff we do in PE. A little bit of fatigue, the breathing's easier. Um, you know, moderately exercising, you can go for long periods. So that's why we set the heart rate zone at about 70 to 80% because that's where you should be. Um, light, that would be the, the fat burning zone here, the light workouts, anywhere between 40 and 80 minutes. You know, it's comfortable, you can breathe easy, uh, the, the muscle load is light, uh, but you're about 60 to 70% of your max. And then very light is just where the heart rate's barely up, it's very easy to breathe. That improves your overall health and it helps recovery. This would be something you wanna do uh, after a heavy competition just to do something. So that gives you an idea why this is important. I'd like to show a couple videos now that kind of explain heart rate and this should, uh, should really help you understand it. I'm Shanae Norvell and I'm gonna show you how to achieve an average target heart rate. First, I wanna give you a little math quiz. We're going to take 220 minus your age. And like my great friend Scott, I'm going to say I'm 20 today. So that's 220 minus 20, 200. Now that's your maximum heart rate. To find out where you want to go for target, you can either go to 60% of that or 85%.
So we'll say 60% of that. That number is where you want to count your heart rate for about 10 seconds to see where you are at the start of your exercise. I'm riding a bike right now, so I'll just say that my heart rate is about 180. Mm, a little high, we'll say it's about at 70. As you're going through your workout, you want to periodically check. You can either check for 10 seconds, multiply times six, or you can check for one full minute or 60 seconds. And that number is gonna be what your heart rate is at the moment. Your goal is to fall between that 60% or 85%, thus accomplishing your average heart rate. A little math and you'll know it. That's how you achieve your average target heart rate. So as we watch those videos, one of the things that we have to realize is that multiple sources indicate the more aerobic and intense the exercise, the more benefits it is for our brain. So when we do the fitness assessments with monitoring, what you're doing is it's, it's helping to give you an understanding of the, of the key to assessing the efforts you're making. So, uh, you know, 60 minutes of play per day, we're seeing all that with the the, the much of the, uh, the national media talking about the importance of getting out and moving. But it's not just about the minutes, it's about what you're doing during those minutes. So um, the heart rate training can really help. Uh, I've shared this with several students before, uh, an example of how this works out. Um, do we really know who's pushing themselves? And heart rate kind of takes the guesswork out. So we've got a group of football players here and they're running back and forth. And, and so the coach is, imagine you're the coach here and you're trying to determine who's, who's really working. Well, as you're watching, you might see this young man and he's running fast, but he's barely in his target. When we, uh, when we actually look at his heart rate, we see the upper limit is the 180, uh, almost uh, 180 here, and the 140 the, between these two lines, there's very little of the time that he's in his zone. In fact, much of it, he's below it. So although he was first in getting in the sprints and running back and forth, maybe he's not pushing himself the way he needs to. And we've got one of the, uh, the linemen here, and this young man is, um, is not getting, he's not first each time. He may be one of the last ones getting back across. But if you look at his target zone, notice how he's up in the zone most of the time, and in fact, many times above that. Uh, towards the end of this workout, he is really up almost, uh, you know, closer to his max heart rate. So that lets us know his effort level is extremely high. And if anything, uh, we need to be okay with him, uh, you know, even slowing down during this part because of how much it's stressing his system. So uh, as he trains that way, he's gonna really get in shape much more quickly than the, uh, than the other person. So comparing the two, you know, it would be easy to, uh, to make a judgment and, uh, and just assume this kid's working harder, but that's not necessarily the case because of heart rate. So that's the importance of, of using that as a, uh, as a tool. Um, notice in the same assessment, you might be watching some uh, youngsters working. Who's working the hardest here? The boy running, the girl walking, or the girl running? Well, when we look at their heart rate monitors and see their, uh, where they were at, we notice that this girl who was walking was actually uh, in 199, which lets you know that her, uh, her heart, her heart itself was working the hardest, which could have to do with their fitness level, but um, don't just assume because of... So as we finish up here, let me just remind you, it's important to always remember to warm up, use the fit principle, cool down. Don't forget to check and understand how heart rate works and those, those components with everything else we're working with will really help to maximize your strength goals and uh, help you to achieve success in lifelong health and fitness. Thank you.